Hi everyone and welcome to my channel and to this short video where I want to share some tips with you on working small scale in soft pastel. Whether it's a small pet portrait or it's a larger painting where despite the size of the painting the faces are tiny within the composition. I want to show you what's possible with the soft pastel sticks and also how to simplify what you see in the reference. If you enjoy this here then please do subscribe to me on YouTube and if you'd like even more pastel tuition with real-time tutorials and lots more visit me on Patreon. I'll add links in the description below. Because of the nature of soft pastel sticks it's not that easy sometimes to get tiny details because they're quite a blunt medium to work with, unlike the sharp points of your pastel pencils. The good news is there are loads of ways around this and it is actually possible to get a high level of detail with these big chunky sticks. I decided to make this video as many of my patrons were asking me about working small scale in soft pastel. It's common to get requests for smaller portrait commissions because most people will assume that because they're smaller they'll be cheaper too. One thing I do recommend is to be careful about undercharging for smaller paintings. Unless you're working in a particularly fast and loose style on your smaller paintings, you may find that they can take a surprising amount of time. Where you will save a little bit of money of course is on the cost of your materials. But your biggest cost, which is for your time, shouldn't really be that much less than it would be on a larger painting. I've always been really careful when taking on smaller commissions because sometimes they have a lot of complicated elements to them. And of course there are small faces to deal with. Capturing a likeness on a really small scale is tricky. There's no room for error on this scale and I must simplify a likeness into a few simple blocks of colour and some very subtle details. Now what do I mean by working small? Because I just want to give you a couple of examples. I've got a couple of recent little studies here. This one is 8 by 8 inches and this one is 8 by 10 inches. Now in both cases the dog is pretty small and it's the full body within the picture, making the dog just a, a very small aspect of both of these paintings. Whereas I've also got another 8 by 10 inch portrait here of my cat Mocha and you can see that actually there's loads of room for detail on this size of painting if you're just painting the head close up. So the types of paintings I'm talking about are where you get a full body of a dog and the, the head ends up being really tiny within the composition. So of course you can produce very small portraits if you're just working on the head and you can still get a lot of room for detail. But it's more when you're trying to create the full scene or put the full body of someone in the picture. Today I want to show you a few examples of where I had to work on tiny details within a portrait and I want to show you some of the things I did to make that possible. Firstly, in each case, whether it's a human portrait or a pet portrait, the accuracy of the line drawing is more important than ever. The smaller you draw something, the more you rely on their prominent gestures to capture a likeness. I often use a grid, but sometimes I freehand and I will do my drawing on a separate sheet of paper and then transfer it onto my pastel paper. The outline needs to already capture a good likeness. With larger portraits, I may have enough tooth on the paper even after I have a few layers down to make smaller adjustments and fix the likeness. But when a face is only a few centimetres in size, you have little room for error. So double check those tiny proportions before you start the colour work. The best images I find for creating a smaller portrait from are those where the lighting really helps to describe the form of the subject. For example, in these pieces, the sunlight casts strong shadows. By using contrasting colours in the light and shade, I can give the impression of the form of the animal quite easily. 
In a reference where the lighting is more flat, it can be difficult to achieve the form with the subtle differences between the values. The first thing I do when I'm painting a small face is to block in the dark values. I try to look for the overall shapes on the face. Looking at the reference from a distance can be helpful, or I've even heard artists say that they blur their vision slightly. But either way, this first stage should block in the bigger shapes and block in the first layer of the dark values. And then quite often, after dealing with the darkest values, I'll go to the brightest ones. It helps me a lot to see these areas blocked in as it shows me how light or dark I need to go with the rest of my values. Also, because of the scale, I don't want to fill these tiny areas of the paper if I hope to add bright white highlights here later. It's best to almost mask off these areas by adding the brightest value early on. Of course, whether that's white or not will depend on your reference image. But with the darkest and the lightest blocked in, I can start to fill in the rest of the mid-tone areas. Normally, when I'm painting a larger portrait and I'm looking for the direction and the length of the fur, and then I'm building that up in thin layers, but with these portraits, I won't be able to capture much of the texture of the fur. It's not individual hairs I'm looking for, but I may be able to indicate clumps of fur. But generally, it's the overall texture of the animal I'm trying to create. If it's an animal I'm painting, then I do try to make my marks in the general direction of the fur, but it's actually broader marks of colour being applied rather than thin marks to indicate individual hairs. Strangely, I often use bigger marks on smaller portraits. And with human portraits on a small scale, it's also a blocking in method that I use to describe the form of the face. Again, it's the overall structure I'm looking at first and zoning in on the bigger shapes and the planes on the face. Once I have those base layers down, I can start to add smaller and smaller shapes and I can even bring in some pastel pencil at this stage to adjust and move the pigment I've applied. The pencils get used less to add pigment, more to refine the pigment on the paper already. But I still do a lot of the work with those big sticks. So what about the main features like eyes and noses? Those are always going to be tricky on a smaller scale. I usually leave them until a bit later in the painting process as I want to be sure that I've got the proportions of the surrounding areas correct first. It's difficult to move a small little eye that you've added um, a very dark outline to. It's difficult to move that later on. So I like to be sure that I've got everything in place before committing to those final details. Like I said at the start, your initial outline is really important. Remember that the eyes may well just be some little dots, or perhaps you'll have a small amount of space to add details using your pencils. But the key is to try not to add more than you can see in the photo reference. In fact, try to simplify. The overall likeness will come from the outline of the eye, but as well as that, the eyebrow areas, this whole structure that surrounds the eyes will really help the likeness too. So focus on those larger areas rather than on tiny little details within the eyes. And be careful not to work to the outside of your original outline. It's so easy on this scale to accidentally make the eyes a little bit too big. And the same goes for noses. Don't stress about those tiny details that you would normally spend ages on. Try to focus on the bigger picture. Having said that though, I have spent a long time on certain smaller portraits in the past where, in particular when it was a human, the likeness was vital. It can involve tiny adjustments less than a millimetre to correct a likeness. So that's why I advise not to undercharge too much for smaller portraits. It can be even more difficult and there's no guarantee that you'll do it a lot quicker. 
a lot of this video has been describing what I do with the soft pastel sticks to block in on the lower layers and then how I can bring in some pastel pencil for the details. But I also wanted to assure you that you can get a surprising amount of detail from these soft lumps of pigment. I use a lot of unison pastels and they break very nicely and also wear down into many interesting shapes. Each little piece of pastel is useful for something. If you'd like to see me demo all the different types of marks you can achieve from pastel sticks and also show you how to get from a brand new box of pastels to a more useful palette of colour, then check out my other video all about making marks in soft pastel. I'll link to that at the end of this video. Soft pastel may seem like a blunt and cumbersome medium to work in for detail, but I find it gives me such a variety of marks. These are all my brush sizes, in fact, and that ranges from a pretty big mark to a very tiny one. So finally, I just wanted to mention pastel paper choice because that will play a factor in how much detail you can create with your soft pastels. So for example, this little study is done on pastel mat and this one is done on Hanamul velour. Now, both of these papers have a relatively smooth texture, so I can get quite a lot of detail on these papers and it still accepts a lot of layers to let me build up the effects gradually. But with this one, for example, I did kind of wish that I'd used a rougher texture of paper so that I could work the landscape a little bit nicer. So I'm going to experiment over the next while with these smaller studies and try out some different papers. So that's something to keep in mind if you're looking to try it working smaller. Will your paper choice make a big difference? So if you've been tempted to try a tiny soft pastel painting but didn't think it was possible, I recommend that you try it. It will do wonders for your observational skills and have you focusing on the overall structure in the blocking in stages. Where small details become less important, it really forces you to use your colour to describe what you're seeing. And that is a great exercise. So whether you're painting a larger scene with a small person or dog in it, or just a tiny portrait, I challenge you to have a go. If you'd like to have a go at some of the pieces I've shared with you in this video, you can work right along with me on my Patreon channel. Check out my full library of tutorials available on my website, emmacolbertart.com. Many of these pieces have specific tutorials showing the full progress of the faces. But I hope that you've enjoyed this short video here, part of my how-to series on YouTube. If you did find this helpful, then please do subscribe to me here and also consider checking me out on Patreon. But thanks very much for watching and until next time, Happy pastling.